People say, Chat GPT can't do math. It will never replace accountants and bookkeepers. It can't do math. Well, it can. And something big happened at the start of July 2023, which opens up so many opportunities, so many possibilities for forward thinking accounting professionals who want to use AI, want to use Chat GPT to get more out of their uh, firms more out of data. So I'm going to share with you in this video a brand new tool that you can use to do data analysis in your accounting firms. Hi there, it's Mark Wickersham, a chartered accountant and author of Effective Pricing for, uh, for Accountants. And in this video, we're going to look at how we can do data analysis with ChatGPT and something brand new that was launched at the start of July. This is so exciting. Uh, let me start off first by talking about the problem, because people talk about how uh, ChatGPT is, is a large language model. So it's great when it comes to words. And there are so many powerful use cases for using it. And we'll have talked about that on previous videos. But what about numbers? Which, of course, as accounting professionals, that's really important to us. Well, it's pretty good at analyzing numbers, at analyzing data. And in previous trainings, I've talked about how we can use it for uh, looking at trends, for example, understanding what's going on behind a business. Because with ChatGPT, both the free version 3.5 uh, and also if you upgrade to ChatGPT Plus and ac have access to ChatGPT 4, one of the things that we can do is we can cut and paste the data from, for example, an Excel spreadsheet into a prompt and ask questions. But there are some things it does struggle with. So let me give you an example. Here's one of the things that I was trying to do with ChatGPT. I had an Excel spreadsheet. In fact, I will, I will just briefly pull it up. I had an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which was a list of uh, transactions and the amount spent and the date. And there were some other things I just removed because they weren't relevant. So I had an Excel spreadsheet. And what I wanted to do with the, with the spreadsheet, a common thing that accounting firms want to do, is we might want to summarize that so that we could identify how much has been spent uh, with each individual supplier, for example. We might just want a summary of the suppliers and the total spend in the year. From a year's worth of data, summarize it by supplier. And something, for example, when I ran my accounting firm, uh, would be something done as part of the working papers to then identify things that, for example, might not be tax allowable, uh, etc. So I decided to set about figuring out how to do that in ChatGPT. So what I did, and I'm going to take you to ChatGPT now, uh, this is the, the problem. I said here, I want you to summarize the data I'm about to give you. I want you to create a table with columns for name and total. I want you to calculate the total amount from the account column for each company listed in the name column. The goal is to show the total amount spent for each individual company. And then I cut and pasted in the Excel spreadsheet. And it, as I let me just get through this bit. Um, it then did that. It created a table just as I wanted with a summary of the spending for each expense code. And at first I was thinking, this is doing a pretty good job. But it seemed to then get, um, it then got stuck. Um, or rather, I asked it to then do uh, a total column because it didn't total it. Because one of the things we must do is double check everything. We're professionals. And when I gave it the the task to redo it and put a total at the end, uh, I then realized it wasn't correct. It started to stumble a bit. Uh, we've got Microsoft Azure here with the individual amount, not the total amount. Uh, it took me a few goes. Uh, ultimately, eventually, after keep doing prompts and uh, correcting it, changing the prompts, getting to do it again, eventually I did get a summary, what looked like a pretty good summary of the expenses. But I asked it to also give me the total so I could go back to the Excel spreadsheet and check it was correct. And what I found was it wasn't correct. 
it, it hadn't done it right. I tried it over and over again. And it's one of the weaknesses of ChatGPT, or at least was one of the weaknesses in terms of it's not great at complex calculations. I also tried using some plugins like, for example, Wolfram, which is a great plugin for doing various uh, financial analysis. It couldn't do it. It couldn't do it. I, I struggled. And then finally, at the start of July, they brought out the plugin that everybody was waiting for. What are plugins? So plugins were introduced a few weeks back and uh, they completely revolutionized and, uh, ChatGPT. What plugins are, think of the when the iPhone was introduced over a decade ago, then Apple introduced the App Store. And when the App Store was opened, it suddenly opened up what was simply a phone that you could do messaging with and access the internet into so much more. If we think about our phones now, the number of apps that we use, it's, it increases the, the, the things that we can get from a, a phone a hundredfold. But in the early days, it was a little bit confusing with all of these apps, and most people ended up with Angry Birds. Uh, anyway, over the years, the apps have got better, and there are some incredible apps for our smartphones these days. Well, plugins are just the same. Plugins are, think of the Apple App Store. Plugins are the App Store for ChatGPT. And the, the great news is there are some really powerful plugins. But also, there's a lot of plugins in there that are either of no relevance to accounting firms or they're just not very good. Anyway, um, one of the big plugins that everyone's been waiting, waiting for is Code Interpreter. Now, Code Interpreter is OpenAI's own plugin. OpenAI, of course, being the company that created ChatGPT. They have created their own plugin. It's called Code Interpreter. And this is extraordinary what it can do. And one of the things it can do is financial analysis. So um, let me tell you, first of all, uh, how you get access to it. So I'm just going to go. Uh, so firstly, you have to be on chat GPT plus. So uh, if you've got the free version, you've got access to 3.5 and, and 3.5 is pretty good. There's lots of great things that you can do. But I would always recommend that if you're serious about AI, if you're serious about ChatGPT, if you're serious about saving hours of time in your accounting firm, then you really want to upgrade to ChatGPT+. There are so many benefits of it. We talk about that in other videos. I won't, won't go through those now. But one of them is you will get access to Code Interpreter. How do you do that? Well, let me skip back across here. What you'll want to do is go down to uh, the bottom of the menu and uh, click on the three dots next to your name and that will open up uh, settings. If we open up settings uh, and click on the beta features, uh, then you will find that this is where you can turn on plugins, which been out, has been out for a few weeks now, perhaps a couple of months even, and code interpreter. So you simply turn on code interpreter. You do need to have the plus account. If you haven't got it, then in settings, you can upgrade. It's a tiny investment. It's really worth doing it. So uh, that switches on the code interpreter. So now what I'm going to do is start a brand new chat. So when you start a brand new chat, you get the option, if you've got the plus account, of using chat GPT 3.5 or 4. We're going to want to use 4. But as, in addition to 4, you can choose whether you have the basic default, whether you want to use plugins, or whether you want to use code interpreter. So we're going to use code interpreter. It is in beta, uh, so it will get better. But already there's a, a lot of stuff that we can do with Code Interpreter. And one of the big things about Code Interpreter is that you can attach files. And as an accounting professional, probably the most powerful, the most useful file that you'll want to attach is a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet. OK, so let's uh, do exactly that. Uh, I'm just going to hit, you'll see that we now have, with Code Interpreter, a plus symbol. And this is where you upload a file. And we can also create our prompt. So I'm just going to go and grab uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, let me just show you what that spreadsheet looks like. This one happens to be downloaded from QBO, QuickBooks Online. It is one of their dummy bits of data that you can play with. And this is, a, I think, uh, it's a billable expense income. 
So we've got a number of different uh, columns here. I've not tidied this up. This is the raw file that I downloaded from QBO. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to upload that into ChatGPT's code interpreter and we want to ask its first prompt. So let me just quickly upload that for you. So you'll see it's now uploaded the Excel spreadsheet. It happens to be called test data two. And I've just put in a prompt there that says, what does this data relate to? Because I just want to make sure it understands the Excel spreadsheet. I didn't tidy it up. It was just a raw spreadsheet downloaded from, from QuickBooks Online. So if I hit the return key, it's now going to go and analyze that data. It might take a few seconds. And you'll see, just like if you're familiar with plugins, it will explain what it is. It will work through. And uh, if it's got that green bar, as you saw, you can click on that and see what it's actually working on. Uh, so here you go. It's now saying the data appears to be related to financial transactions, specifically invoicing for billable expenses. Here are some observations. And it's trying to understand what the data and the columns refer to. And it's a pretty, it's pretty good. It's understood that that is financial transactions. I never told it that. I just simply uploaded a Excel spreadsheet and it's interpreted it. So let's now do something useful with that. Let me go and just grab another prompt. So my prompt now is to summarize by customer, uh, customer name, showing the total amount of sales for each customer. And I wanted to output as a table and also show the total amount. So let's uh, run that and see what it does. So it's going away and analyzing the data. It's doing its workings. This takes a little bit longer than the normal chat GPT-4 because it's using a plugin. It's having to go back to the data and do some analysis. But actually, that was pretty quick. It's come up with, uh, it's, come up with its an analysis and it's going through and it's summarizing uh, those, it's summarizing the totals for each of the individual customers. And it's told me as well, I asked to give the total of 2752475. Well, as a, as a good accountant, we should be double checking that it knows what it's doing. So let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet and just check what the total should be. So here is the raw spreadsheet. And as we go across, we'll see that in column J, it's 27,524 and 75 pence. This is in UK, which is 100% correct. There you go. Uh, you can see it says here, total 27,524.75. It's got a different currency symbol because it's not it, it, because it doesn't know what currency is. I could have told it that in the prompt, uh, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and then what you could do is you can take that table and you can copy and paste that table back into Excel and do further stuff with the summary if you want to. Okay, I'm going to share with you a couple more things. Uh, but before I do that, uh, let me ask you one question. And that is, tell me in the comments box, now you've seen that we can feed an Excel spreadsheet, perhaps something you've downloaded from QBO or Sage or Xero. You can feed it into Code Interpreter and ask questions. How might you use it? What prompts might you ask? What analysis might you do with Excel spreadsheets? Let me know in the comments below uh, how you intend to, to use it, what uses you can see. And also, if you found this valuable so far, please just click the like button and also uh, make sure that if you've not done so already, uh, if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon, you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. Okay, let me share with you uh, one or two more things that we can do uh, now we are uh, up and running uh, with Code Interpreter. Uh, I'm going to and just save some time. I have already uh, typed out a couple of extra prompts. So uh, another thing that we can do with Code Interpreter, which is really useful, is having then done that, let me just go back uh, to here. Having done that, uh, we could then also, it can, we could ask it, what are the best charts for summarizing the data. So we haven't got a lot of data here, but you may be working with clients with a lot more data and we could create some charts. So if we were to ask, ask it what charts we could create, it'll come back uh, and tell us, of course, that visualizing data uh, can help us understand trends. And in this particular case, we could do a bar chart. We could create a pie chart, a line chart. It's telling us what charts that we could use to represent the data, our summary of our customers and what they've spent in the year. So uh, I'm going to now say, create a bar chart. 
uh, I'll, I'll just add for this data and let's see what it does. Uh, so it's working, it's working on it, it's going back into the plugin now, it has to do some uh, additional work and if we click on show work it'll tell us what it's actually doing. It's using Python code behind the scenes but let's not worry about that, uh, it's just need to wait a little bit. It's finished working now and uh, it should come up with something fairly soon. It's not instantaneous, uh, but it's still reasonably quick. Sometimes though, uh, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I'm just being impatient, okay, here it is. So look, there is your total sales by customer chart uh, based on that analysis of an Excel spreadsheet. Wow, that was pretty fast. Okay, um, so what else uh, might we do? Uh, so, uh, if you're not sure of ideas, let me just grab another prompt and uh, we'll show you one more thing. So remember, let me know in the comments box what uses that you can see, but if you're strong to think of uses, we can just ask ChatGPT. So I've got a prompt that says, in what other ways could I analyze this data? And so let me run that. And uh, it says the data set you have, off have offers several opportunities for further analysis. We could look at trends over time. We could look at sales by transaction type. We could look at invoice size analysis. We could look at customer segmentation, revenue concentration, uh, predictive modeling. It's, it's understanding this data. It understands the Excel spreadsheet and is giving us ideas of different ways that we could analyze this data. I don't know about you, but I think this is so, so powerful. The possibilities are huge now that we have Code Interpreter built into ChatGPT. And in the, in the, the weeks and months to come uh, in our live streams, we'll give you further examples and ideas and things that you can do in your accounting firm to analyze data. Okay, one final point though, of course, before I, I leave is we do have to be aware of security and privacy. So, uh, and we'll we'll talk about that on another video, how you get around that. Uh, we do have to be aware of that. There is within ChatGPT the, the ability to turn on effectively a private mode. Um, but whether you've done that or not, I would certainly recommend that when you upload data, make it anonymous. Don't include the client's name. Okay, don't include the client's name, make it anonymous. That's my, my key tip. Okay, if you found this video valuable, then uh, please click the thumbs up button and uh, let me know in the comments uh, the potential you see in ChatGPT and Code Interpreter. How might you use it for analyzing financial data? Hopefully I will see you on a live session soon. We run regular live, live streams on AI and ChatGPT where you can ask me and my team questions. Bye for now.